A matching gift opportunity is a game changer every time I use it. And year-end, it's no exception. It's one of the most effective tools in the fundraising toolbox. Offering a matching gift at year-end doesn't just inspire giving, it supercharges it. It motivates your donor base to give sacrificially. And in turn, you'll likely see more money raised than ever before. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to perfect your strategy at your end. By giving you these steps, you'll be well on your way to reaching and even exceeding your year-end fundraising goals. So, how do you find perfection in your matching gift campaign at your end? It comes down to four key steps. Step number one, set the goal. The first step in maximizing a matching gift campaign is setting your overall fundraising goal. At year end, this is crucial because it gives you and your donors a clear target. You need a goal that reflects what you need to raise, but also a goal that's ambitious enough to inspire action. It's recommended that at least 50% of your goal be raised through pace setting commitments, but don't feel tied to that number. If you can't get 50%, that's okay. Having a matching gift at all is far more important than not offering one. Let me tell you about a friend of mine who ran into this exact issue. Last spring, he was struggling to secure matching gifts for his organization's gala. He was just two days away from the event and had zero commitments for matching gifts. He was ready to give up and go without a match. But I urged him not to quit. I told him to try and find any amount for a match, even if it wasn't huge. He made one last push and managed to secure 10,000 in matching funds. That 10,000 match was a game changer for his event. They offered to match to anyone who made a commitment of $1,200 or more, which is $100 a month. Before that dinner, his organization had received no more than three gifts of $1,200 or more in their history. With the match in place, they received 21 gifts of $1,200 or more. He was blown away by the results, but I wasn't surprised. I knew the power of a matching gift and what it could do. Step number two, find the pace setters. Once you've set your goal, the next step is finding your pace setters. These are the individuals or organizations who will commit to matching the gifts given by others. The key here is to be strategic about who you ask. Start by looking at your donor base. Identify individuals who have given close to the amount you're hoping for in the past. If you're asking for $5,000 commitments, target donors who have given around that amount previously. You might even ask some donors to consider giving more than they have before. Breaking your goal down into manageable bite-sized chunks is a great strategy. For example, if you need to raise $25,000 in pay setting gifts, you might aim for five commitments of $5,000 or you could aim for 10 commitments of $2,500 each. Some donors will give more than $5,000, while others may give less. It all adds up. During one of my year-end campaigns, I was aiming for $25,000 in pay setting commitment, and one donor stepped up with a $50,000 gift instead of $5,000 he had asked for. This allowed me to adjust my expectations and make up for smaller gifts for each donor. The key is to ask boldly and challenge donors to give more. At worst, they'll settle in at a number you originally requested. Step three, challenge the pace setters. Once you identified who you're going to ask, it's time to make the ask. This is where you challenge your pace setters to step up and support your matching gift campaign. Depending on your relationship with the donor, you can make this ask over the phone, through email, or in person. In some cases, a simple call works. That's what I did during my last campaign, but that's because I had close relationships with the donors. 
For others, you might want to send an email outlining the opportunity before you make the call or set up an in-person meeting. Tailor your approach to the donor and your relationship with them. When you make the ask, don't be afraid to ask for large gifts. Explain to your pace setters how their gift will motivate others to give. Let them know that their gift is being leveraged to encourage other donors to give sacrificially. And be clear about how matching gifts work. Their gift will not only make a direct impact, but will also double the gifts of other donors. Also, a key detail, make sure to explain that pace setting gifts should be received after the campaign, not before. This ensures that the pace setters' gifts are matched by other donors. If pace setters' gifts receive their gifts too early, They'll be disqualified by certain fundraising watchdog organizations. Encourage your pay setters to wait until the campaign is nearly finished before submitting their gift. Step number four, use the pay setting commitments to motivate others. Now that you have your pay setting commitments, it's time to use them to motivate the rest of your donor base. This is where the real magic happens. Your matching gift campaign should be front and center in your year-end appeals. Start by sending out a year-end letter to as many remaining donors as possible and make sure to highlight the matching gift. I always segment my donor list for year-end. For donors who have given between one and 999, I send a general dear friend letter. For those who have given larger gifts, I send a more personalized letter with specific giving options based on their last gift. When I follow up with major donors who have given large gifts in the past, I emphasize the impact of their gift when doubled. For example, I say a gift of 1,000 becomes 2,000 with a match, or 2,500 becomes $5,000. For donors who are capable of giving larger amounts, I'll say a gift of 5,000 becomes 10,000 with a match, This specific phrasing makes the match feel real to the donor and helps them visualize the immediate impact. If your organization can qualify how much impact a certain amount of money will have, for example, how many lives will be changed, make sure to double those figures as well. If 1,000 changes 10 lives, 2,000 changes 20. When donors can see the tangible impact of their gift, they're more likely to give. Finally, once your campaign is winding down, follow up with your pay setters and let them know that it's time to submit their full gift. Just make sure this happens before December 31st so they can get their tax deduction for the current year. Most donors will appreciate the reminder as they want to ensure their gift counts for the year. In conclusion, a matching gift campaign is a true game changer, especially at your end. By following these four steps, setting the goal, finding the pace setters, challenging your pace setters, and using their commitments to motivate others, you'll be able to maximize your year-end fundraising efforts and take your organization to new heights. The key takeaway here is that a matching gift is not just a financial tool, it's a motivational one. Donors or partners want to feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. And when they see that their gift can inspire others to give, they're more likely to step up and give in a big way. If if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel and share it with friends and colleagues who might benefit from this content, especially at your end. When you subscribe, you're joining a community of nonprofit leaders who are committed to raising more money and changing more lives. And if you want even more content, be sure to join our Life Changers group on Facebook, where we share tips, advice, and stories of success. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you the best as you strive to become fully funded. See you in the next video.